Hey guys, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete. That's my friend, Mr. Great Blue Heron over there. Sometimes I film a lot of videos with a lot of amazing gardeners and I collaborate with some amazing people, but I didn't have time to edit the footage. And that's when we go back into the SD cards and we access the Jake Mace vault. Hey, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete. This is my new friend, Roxy. This is Roxy. We're just gonna chill over here for a little bit, right? You guys are great, but <laughs> So as a rooster, right now, he's not interested in anything you got. He's a rooster? Yeah, he's a rooster. So he's on he's on watch right now. Oh, okay, so I need to go for one of them. Yeah, so you stirred him up, and so now he's like oh, ultra I alert see. on watch watching his girls. Dang That's pretty Mercury. Step. Also really friendly. Okay, I'll just start with this girl because I... <laughs> I just... Oh, so long it over, bro. Okay, let's see this. Hey, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete, here with my new friend Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus eats while being held and my chickens don't do that. They want to be on the ground. So I like this one. Miley, you stick your tongue out a lot and you wear weird clothes, but you're pretty cool, man. Who are these guys behind me? So, this here's Frankie. Okay. And this here's Boone. And Frankie and Boone were rescues. Oh, really? From yeah. where? From kill pens. Are you serious? So, yeah. So for meat? They were kill them. They're gonna kill them for meat. Exactly. So a lot of times, oh horses who get neglected or let go will Definitely. end up finding their way to these um, meat-based kill pens, where they just get rounded up and driven down to Mexico, where they get slaughtered for mutton. Wow. For mutton. Yeah. Or, or, for, for, or for menudo. Or for menudo. Or yeah. <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So you so, save these two horses from the meat farm. Yeah, yeah. So my wife and my daughter, they're real passionate about horses and horse riding. And so we do have a lot of horses on our property here that have been brought in for rescue. How many you got? Uh, right now we have 10. 10. Wow. And I think we, we own four and then we have uh, six rescues. And who are you, by, by the way? Uh, my name is Marcus Root. Marcus Root. Hi. Your last name is not Root. Yes, it is. You do like a farm and your last name is Root. Yep, my name is Root. R-O-O-T. That is so cool, man. Yep. How come my name's not like Jake Twig or something like that? <laughs> you got a lot of stuff going on behind us right now. Before we talk about your fruit trees mm -hmm. and your experience that led you from GoDaddy to this, I want to show how you got this um, civilization happening from dogs to pugs to mastiff to chickens to pigs. Yeah, yeah, we got a little pig running around. If, here. I, if I put this chicken down in the middle of these big dogs, they won't eat them. Nope. <laughs> How'd you do that? Um. You know what? I know you're big on energy, right? Mm -hmm. And so are we. And at, at a lot of the times, it's just the energy that you put out. And you just kind of put out that, hey man, we're cool here kind of energy. And they kind of see you as the boss. And so if you're cool with it, that's right. they're cool with it. And there's no reason to come in here and be like super alpha, but absolutely they need to know who's boss. But I think it is more about like a positive and flowing kind of energy. And who are these and guys? And just like nipping all the bad behavior in the bud. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> just nip the bad behavior yep. in the bud. So these are brothers. This is Potter. Potter. And then this is Django. Hey Django. These guys are young adolescent mastiffs. They are. They are only about 10 months old English mastiffs. So you really have 12 horses because these guys are might as well. Yeah, yeah, horses. might as well. <laughs> that is so cool. And you got a little pygmy pig that's a month old walking mm -hmm. around. We and... got a little Vietnamese pot belly pig. His name is Kevin Bacon Bits. <laughs> Kevin Bacon Bits. <laughs> and you're rescuing all these pugs. Yeah, we got a pug. We got some Boston Terriers. And we got goats in the back. Yep. Yep. Absolutely, and I got a tortoise running around too. I oh, got you do? a little sulcata. Like That's right. Yep. I've seen your pictures. Yeah, of his name is Gumbo. Oh my God! And he's running around here somewhere. <laughs> so let me ask you, what are we going to look at here first? At your uh, at your farm that you've called the Rock and Root Ranch. Yeah, this is Rock and Root Ranch. Probably because that sounds cool, and, and other because it's got your name in it. Yep, absolutely. How long have you been on this property for? We've been here for a little over a year. And I would say this is Phoenix, but it's not really. It's like southeast Phoenix yeah, called... Yeah, super southeast Phoenix Valley. It's a little uh, town called Queen Creek. Okay. And you are way out here. Yeah. You are. Yeah. Even though you do business toward the city. Yep. yep. You're work, out here in the work country. Work in more metro area, but kind of work and balance all that inner city technology stuff with my plot of land out here. And I'm really impressed. You've been here for a little over a year. Mm -hmm. 
and you've got some seriously mature nectarine peach yes. and fruit apple trees. So let's that, go check them out. That was definitely a selling point when we moved in. The, the previous owner had- Oh, they were here. Uh, previous owner had some really large and established trees, stone fruit trees. And this one is a nectarine. Yeah, this is a nectarine. It's called a silver load nect nectarine. I mean, it, this is the time of year in Phoenix when the peaches and nectarine start to look a little crappier. Yep. And they drop their leaves, but yours still look great. Yeah, not bad. There's definitely some stuff on here that uh, has definitely been weathered. But what I just recently did a couple weeks ago is I came down in and my chickens love to help scratch up and turn that soil. All the mulch. Right. And then, of course, as our trees grow, we want to expand our wells right so that's exactly what i did is i had an opportunity to come in here pull out all my wood chips mm -hmm. expand my wells and while i was in there rake in a little bit of gypsum a little bit of soil sulfur to mm. help with the alkalinity uh bringing that uh, of the native down soil. a little bit yep yeah the native soil cool. and since doing that it's put off a lot of really nice decent growth one last little jet of growth before it goes into dormancy totally so it's yeah. going to turn yellow and it's going to turn a brilliant yellow and orange and then it's just going to done it all you should um, turn your slow-mo camera on and shake yeah. it and all the leaves will fall down. <laughs> that looks cool. Absolutely. And then in the spring it puts off like in just incredibly like fragrant pink so, flowers. So these might be 10 year old nectarine trees for all we know. Yeah, it's definitely very, very old. I'd say it's at least uh, 10 feet tall yep. and like a good like 12 feet wide. Because you must be 6'3". Uh, yeah, something six like two, that. Six, six two, two six mm -hmm. three. So this guy behind, it looks like you planted this apple. Yeah. So a lot of the smaller stuff that we'll see uh, through this video is stuff that I planted. Mm -hmm. And this here is an Einschemer apple tree. Yeah. And this is Einschemer a good apple for tree folks in town. Right. Because it, yeah. it's an Israeli apple, so it does well in the arid, drier climates. Mm -hmm. And it has a low chill hours. Yep. Low so chill it's appropriate hours. for the for the desert. Yep. That's cool. And then over here you have another apple. Another well. apple. And this one right here is my Anna apple. I bought this one about a year older. So it was a year older than that one. And now you I got to tell in the size. And the... I got to say that the shape and the size is like the apples that I have that are about a year or so old. Yeah. But your leaves look healthier than mine. So what's your secret to the healthy leaves? Wow, good. That's nice to hear. Yeah. Um, honestly, I is trying to think about my microclimate and where's this going to do well the best through the, the, the time of the year. So as the sun passes in the summertime, mm -hmm. my nectarine here casts a pretty good shade on the root zone through the later afternoons and evenings. And anything you're putting in the soil or on the leaves to help with feeding it? No, it's just everything I've learned That's from it. watching you and your videos. Man. I mean, you got a ton of mulch <laughs> down here. Yeah, we got so, straw. We got yeah. the wood chips. That's smart. Uh, we got the free city of Tempe compost oh you did yeah that's so great i like to come out here and i get that in the ground too mm -hmm. um the azomite the worm castings nothing out of the norm but what i also did through the summertime is that it's super important that we baby the trees that go in the ground so i had a good shade structure up and over this throughout oh, most of the summertime you did i did which you took down yeah i took down I see like the post here, maybe they were yeah, on that. Yeah, they were, it was there on these, so I kind of cut these down. That is smart. A little bit. Yeah, exactly. So. so you had the, the help from the nectarine tree, plus you had a shade over the top. Yep. What was the percentage of shade? Um, I actually just got the regular Lowe's shade cloth, like which is 70%. about 70%. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And I know that you guys tend to recommend a little bit less than that. You no, know, but like the 30 percenter. Here's what I just learned. I'm about to do a video on this. Yeah. <laughs> I just learned this from the Desert Botanical Garden because I teach their Tai Chi program. They were saying that even saguaro cactus, the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate Phoenix area plant, right? Mm -hmm. We're known for our saguaros. Baby saguaro in the first year or so of growth, the needles are larger than a mature saguaro because the needles shade 70% of the saguaro's green flesh oh, to neat. protect it in I the first year that. or two of growth. So 70% for a new tree is right along the same lines as the saguaro. That's awesome. There cool. So see there, I'm doing something right. There you go. That's why it looks so healthy. <laughs> Now this thing's actually taken a beating. I don't know if yours have taken beatings much either, but totally. that's why it's looking a little heavier on this side than on this side. Yep. It's because the shade sail that I had here with the monsoons and the wind that we get rushing off of these mountains here in Queen Creek. You have zero protection from wind. We have no wind break out here. So it gets crazy. Storms are crazy. So I actually yeah. lost a lot of the Western exposure limbs mm -hmm. um, in the in this year's monsoon. Hmm. So that's why it's a little imbalanced. But it still looks good, man. It still looks good. And I can I love it. I can tell next year it's going to fruit a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And I paid a little extra to have this one because it is a little extra age, but I've, it's, I would totally recommend that. That's just a box store, Ein Schemmer. Do you want to tell us where you got it from? Uh, Desert Nursery here in Queen Creek. So it's Desert called, Nursery. Was it the one down the street I just that's saw? That's right, Ocotillo and Ellsworth. It looked good. It I've does. never been there before. It's amazing. Desert Nursery. Desert uh, okay. Horizon Nursery. You okay. have to check it out. There. I'll go check it out for sure. Cool. 
and you have this uh, really aesthetically pleasing path yeah. that kind of fits the dynamic of the rock and root ranch here. Yep, yep. We're gonna have a lot of space in here. I'm gonna fill this out. Let me guess, is it apricot? Yes, it is. Cool. This is uh, Katie apricot. Okay, looking good. Yep, and this has been in the ground for a little over a year. And you've got some guava and some pineapple guava and yeah, stuff. These babies are babies down below. These are recent. So the feijoa, uh, pineapple guava. Yep. Uh, tropical pink guava, which my favorite I, one. I had this up uh, as a windbreak because again we had some recent yeah. storms here, so I had this up as a windbreak, but then it was looking very sad, and so as soon as it took the windbreak down, it perked right back up because the pink guava loves the sun. They love it. You, as much as we consider it a tropical plant, it it really does want to take it to the heat here in Arizona. See, so. I'm glad we're like 45 minute drive away from each other, our properties, mm -hmm. and uh, we're having the same experience because my guavas can take the full sun, no cover. Nice. And then beside this area, you have a network of raised beds you're just putting in, it looks like. Yeah. So I, check this out. I built this myself. This was all dirt back here. Hold on. And you got this uh, <laughs> authentic green acre style arch yep. going on. You do some pull-ups from up there? <laughs> I can do one. I can okay. do one pull-up. <laughs> because you and I met actually the first time, the first three times. At the uh, gym. At the gym <laughs> in the locker room, half naked. <laughs> <laughs> so the people we meet doing random things, right? So I know that there's some pull-ups in you somewhere. <laughs> the raised beds just look so nice. Yeah. And did you build these out of redwood or what did you do? I did. Uh, these four that are filled are out of redwood. So mm -hmm. priced a little bit higher, um, but they are supposed to last a little bit longer, supposed to be bug resistant. Mm -hmm. And um, they look a little nicer too. And then yeah. the two on the end, I did experimental. I did those out of Douglas fir. So I'm gonna see and experiment for myself yeah. how they vary and how they last. And you didn't together. treat them. Did not treat them. Yeah. I used the fence post redwood and five years later, it's still, still kicking. So you have thicker than me. And so you'll you'll be pleasantly surprised. I know. Excellent. Yeah. Looking forward to it. That's awesome. Is this the city of Tempe compost too? Um, no. Uh, well, some of it is, but mostly. It's like a mixture. Yeah, yeah. It's a mixture. But a lot of the um, <clears throat> coconut core, coconut pith, mm -hmm. uh, worm castings, uh, one third native, one third compost, yep. one third potting soil, and then azomite. Some of the minerals. Yep. The rock dust minerals. And this is looking pretty good. And you just built these? Yes, I built them over the summer. Over the summer, the so just a few months. In the heat. <laughs> Isn't that always the case? Yeah, what like, we gardeners do, I know, know, getting ready for the season. They make us earn it, like the weather makes us earn That's it. That's right. Hey! Oh my God. <laughs> you gotta nip this in the bud right yeah, now. That's right. Hey, what are you doing? You helping me? Thank you. That's cool though, you have the gates so you can keep them out if you wanted That's to. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And we and because again, Queen Creek, lots of critters, lots of bugs and stuff out sure, here. Because we yeah, get the mountains are right there. Mm -hmm. Mountains right there, so we do get coyote that come down. Oh. Um, there was a report of a black bear a couple weeks ago. I heard that on the news. Yeah. So black bear sighting. But so we how most do you protect definitely... your pigs, dogs, chickens from those animals. I uh, they let they protect themselves. They do. Yeah. They kind of have a little team. That's right. Okay. The team team and ranch. So you work for GoDaddy mm -hmm. in a software, yep. all this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So what led you to have this kind of life? Um, 40 minutes outside the main city because you're, you're still doing GoDaddy and then you come out here to your acre farm. Yep, that yin and yang, baby. What, what led you to this? Um, it was balance. It, it was as, as much as we need to get stuff done in the world and, and we need to feel worth and we need to feel successful, we also need to feel spiritually fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And I found in my own journey and just exploring and adventuring what makes me happy, mm -hmm. being out in nature, being... You said a lot of backpacking, camping, hiking. Yeah, hiking, backpacking. I, I kind of transitioned you to this. Yep, yep. And then I wanted some of that feeling at home and that's what got me into gardening. Okay. And then when I started gardening, oh boy, did I learn I love it. Can I ask you how old you are now? I'm 36, I just turned 36. 36, and so you said you started around 30 years old having yeah. this kind of cathartic moment in your life. Yep, where I was like, tired of video games, tired of TV yeah. all the time, tired of sitting around and and not having any good stories. You know what I tell folks that um, the young people that follow me on YouTube and online that uh, are into martial arts or gardening, I'm like, you know, I play video games too, but my video game is called Kung Fu. My video game is called gardening. Yep. My video game is called hiking. I'm as focused and as dedicated to my game as you are, just mine happens to be outside. That's right. So you're you're the li living proof of that. Yep, and here's my, my, my achievements, my achievement list. Totally. Just as we have achievements of video games, here are my actual achievements. Now why do it out <laughs> here in Queen Creek on an acre as opposed to you could have gotten an acre in town? We could have, we could have, but Queen Creek um, allow, you know, provided um, more space, less cost, mm -hmm. and it's got, it's always had, as an Arizona native, um, I watched Tempe 
grow and Change. I watch, yeah, That Gilbert. downtown of Tempe, you can't even see the stadium anymore. That's right. Of ASU. Yep. It's and gone. I, I watched Gilbert grow and change, Mesa grow and change. Mm -hmm. And when I found myself in a point in life where I can now afford this, I mm -hmm. saw Queen Creek as a little nugget of what's left in, in terms of like that rural feeling and community. So you want that rural feeling. That's what you want. Yeah. But at and the that, same time, that balances you. at the same time, Queen Creek, I feel, has a lot of foresight into its, uh, its planning and mm -hmm. it's going to keep all of this feeling, but still develop and, and stay true to the, to the farmer's markets, uh, to the equine community. Horses. Uh, horses. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And that's important to us and our family. So that's a big reason why we're out here too. So what it's sounding to me like is you made an adult decision <laughs> and you were in a position where you were able to kind of direct your life with a lot of conscious uh, a lot of conscious mental thought mm -hmm. as a 30 year old yep and you didn't just happen into something you said I want this I'm just, let's go get it yep it's very adult of you Thanks. yeah <laughs> let's uh, let's take a walk and see the yeah. rest of this place here Kevin bacon bits hey so this is Kevin bacon bits <sighs> How did you hold him without him squealing? Oh, because I he's, couldn't do that. Because again, uh, alpha. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy's not full grown. He's a baby, right? He is just a baby. He's only he's about seven weeks old. How big is he gonna get? He might get about eighty to a hundred pounds. Yeah. <laughs> he was starting. Because <laughs> he eats everything, so he'll just continue to grow as he continues to eat. Look at the tail. Yes. That is that is and very just, hilarious. And just like a dog, he's telling you right now that he's happy. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And they are very similar to dogs. They absolutely are. Trainable. Very smart, very, very friendly and loving. And there's, I mean, as a vegan, I mean, I'm the vegan athlete on YouTube for this channel, right? <laughs> yep. So, and I'm the only vegan in my family. So I'm always telling my family who loves dogs and loves cats, you know, if you spend some time around the pigs and the cows, you would extend that love to them. Absolutely. That's what I've done. Yep. So cool. Yeah, we love these little guys. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> so I took advantage of the SRP free shade tree program here in Arizona, our water uh, and electric company. The Salt River Pro Project uh, puts on a free shade tree program. Which here, is a power company. Power company here in Arizona, where if you go and you take an hour long class and learn about the proper way to plant a tree for the purpose of shading your house and cutting down your electric bill, mm -hmm. they'll give you free trees. Like what kind of trees? Like Palo Verde, Mesquite, Ironwood? Natives. So they'll give you a choice from Palo Verde, uh, willows that are native to Desert Arizona, willows. Yep. and then the uh, mesquite. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So you planted those? I did. I have a blue Palo Verde. Which oh, I, oh, you just did this? Yeah. So this is the blue Palo okay. Verde. That's Let me tell the folks at home. When I planted my, this is a Florida blue Palo Verde. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I planted the same one because the Desert Botanical Garden uh, docents who are educated on the types of natives, mm -hmm. they told me that this is the most delicious and highly edible of the Palo Verdes in terms of the seed pod. And mine was this big when I got it. and within two years it was a 15 foot tall by 15 foot wide tree yep and i learned that from your channel which is why i, I picked this one are you serious yep. no way <laughs> <I'm> serious. <laughs> That's awesome. a lot of uh, what you see around here at rock and root ranch is inspired by you and everything that you do so that's awesome thank you absolutely i don't have any pugs though <laughs> here is another guava recently planted uh red malaysian okay and also i understand that that one's supposed to take some pretty good sun so mm. that's why i have it here yep i found too that the guava in the phoenix area easily one of my top 10 fruit trees to grow and it takes the cold well too nice i think so excellent uh wonderful pomegranate pomegranate yep put this in the ground just a couple weeks ago so we're kind of seeing your place has a lot of mature trees that were here before yes but we are seeing it at the genesis yes of what you're doing yep absolutely yeah. i keep telling everybody give me a couple of years and this is going to be a real special place see and i didn't have anybody to watch and follow when i started doing this except maybe john kohler a little bit okay yeah he doesn't do a lot of fruit trees he does a couple no yeah yeah mm -hmm. you know so um i think that you have not made the same mistakes that i made your infrastructure looks pretty good to me oh there's mistakes we're just not going to talk about those <laughs> it's always a mistake <laughs> Let's go check out your chicken area over here. Yeah, sure. Golden Dorset at uh, This is the desert willow, also from the SRP program. It's about to flower. So you'll have to tell me when this guy flowers, what color they are. Uh, they are like pinkish purple. They are. So maybe we both have a bubba. There's two varieties of desert willow. And uh, the Native Americans of the area would use the leaves and the flowers medicinally as in like an antibiotic. Nice. So look up some ancient, you know, way to use them. And you won't need drugs anymore. Heck yeah, same thing with the uh, creosote back here. This is actually my neighbor's tree, but this is another native used medicinally. And when they use it medicinally, it's called... Mm. It's called chaparral. Chaparral. Yeah. I went to chaparral <laughs> high school. <laughs> That's where I would have went if I didn't yeah, move. Yeah, there you go. And they can live for 10,000 years. Holy the God. oldest 
uh, tree on the earth. It's in the Mojave Desert and it's a creosote. Nice. That's what I read. My favorite thing about them is when they flower and they put off the little white puff balls, mm -hmm. you can grab those, kind of crush them in your hand and smell them a little bit. And its nickname is called Desert Rain. It's the rain. Yep, it That's smells awesome. exactly like rain. That's so amazing. Love it. And if the uh, if it starts to rain on us right now today, which it might do, yeah. I felt the drop already. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> uh, I've only done probably three videos ever in the rain because it never rains. In this <laughs> But did you build this or what happened? Yes, this is again. Uh, you did built, not build this. I did build this. It looks so good. Thank you. Uh, built, built this chicken coop uh, and, and add this little add-on. I'm probably gonna continue to add on little things like this and try to go with like a, a Brazilian favela kind of feel back here. Okay. Where okay. it's just like all ramshackle. Do the chickens get up <laughs> on top of here? No, no one has gone up here yet. I don't know if it's, it's the texture or what, but I don't seem to like it. That's pretty cool. Yep. And so my uh, chickens live back here and my tortoise lives back here. He's got oh, a he little does. hole in the ground. And so we're about to be going into winter here pretty soon. So he can stay down in this hole. It's a sulcata or a desert tortoise? Sulcata. Okay. So he'll go down there and he'll just hang out and it'll stay cool in the summer and warm in the winter. That's perfect. How do you harvest eggs? Oh, well, you build one of these. So your chickens can go in there and get some shade. Yep. They probably sleep in there. Oh, we've got one in here right here. So that guy's in there Hello. laying the eggs. Maybe he's brooding. She's brooding. This is Rebel. Her name is Rebel. Mm -hmm. She looks like she's got the eye of that she's gonna try to peck me if I, I go in there. But she does make very fun noises. So she's probably sitting on a bunch of eggs right now. You think? How many chickens do you guys have? Oh man, uh, 18 chickens. And so how many eggs a day do you think you get? Right now we're collecting about seven to eight eggs a day. That's great. Yeah. A lot of them are young though. And that's why sure. not, we're not in full production. They'll get into their laying years coming up. That's fantastic. And then uh, where do they sleep at night? Uh, in, the, in the coop. In the coop. Well, <laughs> They're supposed to be in the coop. They sleep on the rail. Oh, they do. By my grapevines. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's cool. You got, you know, you gave them some options. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes my um, sulcata tortoise could just sleep out in the middle of the yard. Nice. He doesn't even know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> he was running full speed. Aww. So, what do you have as far as goats, sheep, that kind of stuff? Um, we have the horses and we have goats over there. Mm -hmm. And then we have the tortoise and the chickens over here. Um, my daughter has a rabbit. That she okay. In her room. okay. And then we have the dogs. When I see all the animal manure, mm -hmm. the scat, whatever, is this horse, is this sheep, goat, all of it? Yes. Yeah, and you're mixing this thing with your mulch. Yes, I do. And what's your thought process behind that? Um, well, what we do normally with the horse manure, because a horse manure is a hot manure, yeah. you do want to make sure that that composts first. For like a year or something. Yeah, for a, quite a long while. So what we sure. do is we pile it in a corner of the yard, which we won't look at. Okay. <laughs> Everybody has a dark corner of the yard. That's right. And Nobody then, goes in the dark corner of my yard. <laughs> but then when it's about time and it's, it's done being hot and it's cold manure, then we just mix it in with the mulch okay. and the goat manure, which is cold, and the, horse man, uh, the rabbit manure manure which is also cold can go straight in. Okay cool and so that's mixing in your compost and your mulch mm -hmm. and then as it rains it kind of washes those nutrients into the soil and yep. probably why your trees look so good. Thanks. Yeah out here in Queen Creek we're lucky enough to because there's a lot of washes out here mm -hmm. we're lucky to have a kind of a sandy loamy mm -hmm. uh, mixed to our native soil. We still got tons of clay and it can get rock hard in a second but, mm. but we do have some pretty good decent drainage out here and so as we let our mulch and our compost kind of break down into the soil it gets real nice real quick. That's great and you got a brand new mulberry looking over here. Yes. Which so, uh, is a female, I'm, I'm guessing. Yep. So it fruits. This is our female mulberry that I got from Seamus. I, we put it in the ground last year. What uh, kind of mulberry is it? Uh, this is the Shangri-La mulberry. Okay, that's his favorite. Yeah. 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 So we got the Shangri-La mulberry here and um, I did not cap it or stake it very well. So it's doing one of these things. That's okay. You just planted this this year? Last year. Oh, last year. Yeah, so it's been in the ground for over a year now. Okay, and uh, I mean, if you prune it over the winter time, it'll come back in a great shape. Mm -hmm. Go for it, yeah. yeah. This guy will be humongous the next year, I'm telling you. Nice. He'll be huge. Now, let me ask you though, should I work on staking it straighter or should I just go ahead and just cap this bad boy? You mean prune it? Yeah. Cut it? Yeah. I would, if I was me, I would cut it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because these guys grow so quickly that literally if you straighten it mm -hmm. with a stake or if you cut it, you won't know the difference in a minute a month. Really? Like the, the cut might actually encourage a more uniform growth pattern and make it more symmetrical. You might even get more fruit that way because you might get four branches from that cut that will, you know, make the tree a healthier fruiter. All right. So I would definitely prune it 
and let it kind of create this bushy kind of shape. Sweet. Yeah, because you got your uh, canopy started down here, which is a great height, mm -hmm. usually hip height. So I think you've got, you know, a year from now, this will be easily 10 times bigger than it is now. Excellent. Like it'll be the size of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious, in like one year. And this is another one. Smaller. Which kind is this one, the Same. Everbearing? Same, Shangri-La as well. Yeah. Cool. Then, and I'm, if we go to, if we make a turn pass over here, this is where your yard looks really amazing. Some great looking peach trees. Is that like a flowering plum or a, some kind of plum? Yep, that's the, the tall one is the Santa Rosa plum. Santa Rosa. Yep. And that's this great. is a peach. I don't know what variety it was here when we got here. Okay. And this, that peach tree was actually twice the size um, earlier this spring, but it loaded with fruit so well because I treated it so well that yeah. it snapped in half. That's right. I saw this picture. Like. Like it literally snapped in half. It literally snapped. Like in you half. lost half the tree. Yeah, half the tree. Oh, yeah. It looks great though right now. It does. It bounced back. You know, Came I trimmed back. it, trimmed it up, and shaped it out, and it looks fantastic. I mean, it'll fruit great next year too. I mean, it looks great. Yeah. See, new growth coming off. You new can't one. even tell where it snapped. This and the Santa Rosa plum, I lose probably about like forty percent of the fruit to the birds. Really? Yeah. That's, but you know what? Everybody's, everyone's we, got we some pets. We share and we live and we live and let live and I still got the lion share. I always say, whatever tree you love the most, just plant five of them. Because <laughs> you'll lose two of them to the birds and you get three. That's true. And my grapes behind us Everybody's here. yard right now that I've been to recently, their grapes look really bad because it's the end of the summer. Yeah. And they're not putting off fruit. Yours look the best. Oh, thanks. My chickens have ravaged them. Yeah, have they really? <laughs> yeah. Because the chickens, and it's hilarious to watch because they'll just jump. And if you've ever seen a chicken jump, it's just it's it's funny. funny. It's hilarious. So they jump and they pick this down to nothing. It's like CrossFit guys jumping onto a box. Yeah. And then down. <laughs> totally. They definitely get some height. Thanks. But um, these fruit. What varieties are these guys? I don't know because they were established. They were here when we moved. Did in. they fruit this last year? They did. What, what, they, what did the fruit look like? Um, green and then they turned like a, a violet, a light violet. I think they're probably Autumn Royale. Okay. That's what mine do, the Autumn Sweet. Royales. Yeah. They're green with a little bit of that like brown or purple streak. You know? Yep. And my leaves look the same as this. That's great. And you're using them, you're using your fence to trellis them. Mm -hmm. Who is this guy right here? This is Little Beans. Little Beans is he's just, also a rescue. He's just, he's just hanging with us the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Hey, Little Beans. He's also a rescue. He's a good boy. <laughs> all these, um, all your pigs and your dogs, they're all snorting when I'm holding them. Yeah. Like. <laughs> this guy has a, has a crazy eye over here. Yeah, he sure does. How, how old is he? We don't know. <laughs> he's going to fall asleep in my arms. He's a champ though. <laughs> He's following us around because he wants to be held. Yes, he does. All right, here we go, my guy. Little beans. <laughs> 100% clay, by the pool, by a wall with nothing. Yeah, no shade at all. What's up, my friend? Little bacon bits? What is his name? Kevin. Kevin Bacon Bits? What's up, Kevin Bacon Bits? I'm going to try to keep you up front. I'm doing it. You're not spilling yet. I know. I know. I know. Keep it together. Keep it together. No. <laughs> oh, all right, fine. <laughs> I almost had it. <laughs> Let's go see the other guys. So Marcus, you got the Valencia orange, which is, you said, having kind of an off year for fruit. Yeah. But this is a mandarin. Mandarin. And it's loaded. Absolutely loaded. I mean, it's small. Yeah. It's and it's a loaded. Probably, you know, a hundred plus fruit. Absolutely. These guys, I know they start to ripen in about a month or so. Mm -hmm. You can already see them starting to put on some other color, like right here. Mm-hmm. And uh, the cool thing about this tree is that, did you plant this? No, this was here already. It was here. It's all reachable. Yep. And it's loaded with fruit. Loaded with fruit. So this is kind of like almost ideal um, fruit tree conditions is have it reachable and loaded. That's true. From the, from the trunk up, reachable, loaded, that's exactly what you want. But because this was here and planted before I got here, mm -hmm. you can notice down here, Lots of rocks. Yeah. Lots of hard clay soil. So you have yet to come over here and do your mulch thing. Haven't, right? haven't had a chance to really amend this over here. Mm -hmm. So it's been a much bigger struggle to keep this guy happy than any of my other citrus with the ground amendments. But once in a while, that stress can induce more fruit. It can. Because the tree wants to, you know, spread its seed and propagate itself. So yep. maybe you... So I think that's why we're seeing even larger load this year mm -hmm. than we did last year. You're even bracing the tree from snapping. Yeah. You're afraid of the tree snapping now. Yeah, yeah. so now I look at that yeah. Benetur like a hawk. And <laughs> yeah. And That's then amazing. behind us is a big lemon tree, and behind that was another orange tree. However, those, the fruit on them, for whatever reason, don't taste very good That's at all. Good. So I'm pulling those out, and I'm putting date palms in. That'd be great. That's awesome. 
Do you have the source for the date palms yet? I do not. Okay, I'm gonna talk to you then. Uh, yes. My wife and I argued over this one for months. Is it a key lime? We said or, it's a or, lime. Is it Mexican lime? I said Mexican lime. She said it was a lemon. Okay. We came to learn it's actually a three in one. So we were both right. Oh, so it's three grass on one <laughs> yes. stock. And you got some ripe fruit already down below. Yeah. Can I grab one? Yeah, go for it. So uh, these are actually- So what is this one? This is, these are actually Mexican lime. However, they're overripe. Mm. And so when they overripen, they'll turn yellow. Wow, that is so delicious. Yeah, but they are incredibly juicy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Look at that. drip it on the oh, top. Oh yeah. So that's awesome. Mm. Mm. So this also puts off a cocktail lemon and a little orange as well. And this is Daisy. Daisy's also been with us since the beginning. These are the two that we own. And the horses are so small, like they know me, that I'm new and they don't know about me yet. Mm -mm. Trying to figure me out. You know what they like to do with new people? What's you know that? why he sticks his face in like that? Why? Because he wants to smell you. So if yeah. you breathe into their nose, then they get your smell. Hmm. And that's what they want. Who, what is this one's name? Daisy. Daisy. So Roxy and Daisy. Hey Daisy. I need a carrot or something, Daisy, sorry. <laughs> hey, Daisy. You guys are so chill. So how old do you think that they are, Roxy and Daisy? Roxy is 14 and Daisy is six. And where does uh, you know, a horse's lifespan out here in this area? They'll go into the, the mid thirties. Oh really, mm -hmm. wow. So you got, you got this guy until you're in your almost 50. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's up buddy? <laughs> she likes the, Ooh, it's a, uh, she's a she? Yep. Daisy likes the mic that uh, the dead cat or, or the muff that's around the mic. <laughs> How long have you guys had Daisy for? I've had Daisy for about four years now. Wow. She's pretty big. Yeah. Who's the biggest horse? Uh, probably Daisy. And we're getting uh, we're getting overrun here right now. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy likes my hand. Yeah, this is Shorty. He's, he's my homeboy. Shorty's cool. And who's this behind me? Roxy. Roxy again, that's right. <laughs> Roxy is super calm. Yes, yeah, she is. Hey you guys, under the canopy of the uh, Mexican lime tree, I wanted to take this time to thank Marcus Root for having me out to his place today at the Rock and Root Ranch. It was great to hear about his message and his history and see what he's doing here at this, you know, brand new, I don't want to say urban farm, it's an actual farm. This is a real farm, yeah. not even an urban farm. I can't even call you an urban farmer because you're like an actual farmer. Down here at the Rock and Root Ranch. And, who, and who's this guy? This is Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury. <laughs> These sing Queen songs? Absolutely. That's awesome. <laughs> well, thanks for all the uh, inspiration for those watching. And if you guys, I know Marcus is pretty active on social media, whether it's Facebook or maybe even YouTube. So if you ask questions down below, I know Marcus will plug it in there and help answer the questions or at least give people a little bit of a something. Yeah, for sure. My Snapchat's pretty fun and so is my Instagram. Is it? Yeah. So what is that? What is your Snapchat and Instagram? So you can find my Instagram and my Snapchat at Marcus Rudis. That's just Marcus Root US. Marcus Rudis. Marcus Rudis. Okay, I'll go follow you. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. I'll see you next time. You guys, I want to encourage you. Eat your limes. Eat your peaches. Eat your mulberries, avocados, all that stuff. Go vegan, grow the food at home, and you can check me out at the Urban Gardening in Arizona Facebook group, or I'm on Instagram and Snapchat too. Jake makes Tai Chi. I'll see you guys next time.